Hey you guys, what's up, my name is Jake Seikiniko, welcome back to a new video of mine. Today I have something cool for you. I've been working on this for way too long and I will try to make videos more often and not get stuck with one video idea because I try to make it perfect. But at the end I think it was actually quite good. I made a minion tier list. And since my last video blew up like a rocket, I really just want to say thank you so much for the support and for these awesome comments of you guys. I really appreciated that. And please don't get me wrong, this is not a minion tier list like anybody else has done it before. I tried to take every single important part into consideration. I did not only work on the money making of every single minion, I also tried to include everything that is important about each individual minion. Hey guys, sorry, quick interruption whilst editing the video. I know it's been a month since I recorded the video, you probably don't know it, I do. And that is a reason why the snow minion is not included, because I recorded the video right before the Jerry's Workshop update came out. So if it's not included, don't worry about it, it's not because I forgot about it, it's because it wasn't out back then. And the ice collection is also valued a little bit lower because there was no purpose at all in the ice collection. I understand there is one now, but like I said, those two things are not included. And last but not least, I'm gonna start moving next video, and I guess you'll see what I'm talking about later. As you know, there are 48 minions, and Every single minion doesn't come even close to any others. So if we now take two minions as an example, you have the clay minion and the cobblestone minion. Both of these minions are pretty much in a really high class of a tier list, but both of them have such a difference between their kits. If we for example take the money making kit, you can see that a clay minion makes way more money than a cobblestone minion and the cobblestone minion couldn't even compete with it. Look into that. You can see that a cobblestone minion, for example with its collection, has something pretty unique. It has the ability to create super compactors. And without them, you wouldn't probably want to be in late game. But since collections and money is not all, there is one more big part of a minion. The time or coins or items it takes to upgrade them from tier 1 to tier 11. This is also a pretty important part if you want to get to a higher slot cap. But since money and collection are not really comparable, I try to create a unique measuring system. I tried to narrow it down to three categories, and those are money making, obviously, because that's probably the most important part about a minion, upgrades, and I tried to include both the time as well as the items and coins it takes, because, like I said, there could be some differences between each and every single minion, because all of them are pretty unique. And last but not least, a category that I called usage. A usage is not really dependent on the collection alone. It's the usage of the minion. If you for example now take a look at the clay and the cobblestone minion again, the cobblestone minion performs really really well because it has some usage in its collection, right? And the clay minion, on the other hand, is basically with its collection useless, but the clay can be sold to the merchant and makes a lot of money. Which means I tried to take my personal opinion into this calculation but not too much. Since I didn't want to only add my opinion, I also asked Akinsoft if he could help me with basically just rating every minion depending on its usage. He helped me out a lot and not only with that, he also helped me out with the minion heads, which you can see later on in the video. I'm gonna just quickly say thank you so much for that. And yeah, that's basically it, those three categories. But how can you now measure that? Because you can't really compare a collection or in our case, the usage of a minion with the money making because those are totally different values. You can't really compare a state of a tier with a number. That is why I invented some kind of point system, where I gave points for each and every single category in the game, and I just gave them to minions depending on their value of this certain category. I'm actually pretty happy on how this tier list worked out, and it took me, like I said, ages to get up with the system. Since I don't want to talk about numbers too much in this video, I will leave a link down below to the spreadsheet where I actually took every single data and created the tier list that you can see behind me right now. Another Shoutout goes to T Blaze Warrior T's spreadsheet of minions that helped me out a ton with the calculations because without him it would have taken probably way longer to get the right numbers of how much a minion can make, how much a minion sells for and how long it takes to upgrade a minion. I also did my own calculations but it, like I said if you're interested in that please feel free to make a copy out of it. It's pretty simple, click on file, make a copy and then just play around with the numbers and see what you end up with. As you can see, the collections are pretty much evenly spread out all through this tier list. But if we now take a look at this tier list, you can see that the ore minions, for example, are all the way on top. And 
the farming minions, as well as most of the wood minions, are way down there. Which means that if you actually want to progress in the game, you should probably focus on ore. Which is an interesting part that I actually didn't even know about. I knew for a fact that ores are pretty important in the game, as they have so much value within not only their collection, but also their ability to take in compactors. But on the other hand, I would have actually never expected the spider and skeleton minions being this far down in the tier list. As you can see, it's pretty evenly spread out, and you have a couple of all collections everywhere all around. But if we now look at the best and the worst minions, you can see that there's a clear difference. And I think it turned out pretty great, because I I actually wanted to show this off. The cactus minion and the tarantula minion are the best and the worst, which means they should perform very different, and they do. The tarantula minion makes insane amounts of items that can sell for a lot at the merchant and also be used within its collection, which means the tarantula is a perfect minion. Not only that, but it's also pretty easy to upgrade the tarantula minion if you do slayer bosses. The cactus minion, on the other hand, has no value in its collection because it's pretty much useless except for the thorns book, which right now you shouldn't be putting that on your armor. And for money making, it's also not too great. It also takes an insane amount of time to upgrade it based on the fact that you're unable to put a super compactor in there, which makes it not only theoretically, but also actually just the worst minion in the game. If you take a look at the flower minion, for example, it's the same way. Money making, it's pretty much garbage because the items have no value. The usage is pretty much none because it doesn't even have a collection. And to upgrade it, it takes ages, even after the buffs that it's gotten. Alright, since I've been talking about this tier list for quite some time now, I'm actually gonna do something with this information. I've gotten a lot of information about all these minions in the last couple of days because I've been asking around uh, as well, and I've also noticed that new players have a bit of a trouble with minions in general. So that is why I'm going to start a series on every single minion and its pros, cons, and maybe tips and tricks on how to upgrade or use them efficiently. At the end, I just want to quickly mention, I, like I said, worked on the spreadsheet forever, and it took me way too long because I've actually never worked on a, on a spreadsheet like this before, so please feel free to make a copy of the spreadsheet and play around with the numbers and see what results you're getting out of that. Like I said, my and Akinsoft's opinion are in there as well, which I actually tried to take into consideration as little as possible. Where I ended up with a split where I gave the most points to money making, the second most points to usage, as I still think it's way more important than upgrades, and last but not least, still even if it's not too important, it is an important factor of a minion, the upgrades. All right. So this is it. If you like what you saw, and if you want to see more of this, feel free to leave a like and share your opinion on what you want to see in the future or how I could improve on my videos. And since I'm going to make more videos in the near future, feel free to subscribe to always stay up to date with what I'm doing and hit the notification bell to always get notified when I'm uploading. I hope you learned something new on how minions are actually valued and how you would rate them in a kind of unique and unified measuring system. And like I said, I hope you enjoyed it, thank you very much for watching, and have an awesome day.